Okay. When looking into the future, you must remember it's always uncertain. Why is that? Well, the future hasn't happened yet. So, when we're making decisions, it's um, we're looking forward and we're taking information into account that hasn't happened yet. In some cases, we might have probabilities that we attach to different outcomes. So, say there's three different possible outcomes and each one has a probability attached to it based on past information or the history of the company, then we can calculate an expected outcome. Now, the expected outcome is nothing other than just the weighted average. So, what is weighted average? It's the average of all the outcomes. So, say, three different uh, demand levels for the product. Uh, the average of that, but each of the outcomes are weighted according to the probability attached to it. So, a high demand might be 20% likely, medium demand 30% likely, and then a low demand 50% likely. Now, these probabilities always has to add up to 100%. Otherwise, some, some probable outcome has not been taken into account. So, remember, when you are asked for expected value, you actually ask for the weighted average of all the outcomes. It's very important, though, to realize that that expected value, or the weighted average, is not the actual outcome. Remember, the actual outcome is unknown. It's in the future. We don't know what it is going to be. The actual outcome will be one of the three demand levels. The expected value is just the weighted average. So why, what is the usefulness of expected value if it's not the actual outcome? Well, if the project or the decision can be carried out multiple times or a lot of times, then the average of all the individual actual outcomes will be very close to the expected value. So if it's something that's uh, repeated over and over again, the expected value will approximate the average outcome. So it's very important then as well to realize that if you are only making the decision once, the expected value is of much less value. You will see that in an example um, in a different video clip. It's important to remember that uh, the probabilities that we attach to the different outcomes are based on historic information. So if it's believed that the future will not approximate past events, then these probabilities can't be used as is, or they'll have to be adjusted for any known future events that can take place, that you know of, any changes that will happen. Uh, then you have to distinguish between discrete outcomes and continuous outcomes. Discrete outcomes are, for example, if you throw a dice, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 6, it can't be anything in between. Or, for instance, uh, if you win a car, it might be white, blue or red, it can't be anything in between. So that's discrete outcomes. Continuous outcomes is where there's a whole continuum or a range of possible outcomes that can be represented on a curve. So that's like prices uh, of shares listed on the JSE or uh, selling prices for a product or number of units sold for a new product launch. So how do we use this expected value to make a decision? Well, if it's only one project we're evaluating, if the expected value is positive, the first recommendation would be, yes, you can accept it based on the positive expected value. But you can't stop there. You must remember, this is just one tool to help you make a better decision. So you can't ignore all the possible outcomes. So from a risk management point of view, you'll, you, you have to look at the worst case and the best case scenarios. So what does that mean? If there's three possible outcomes, you'll have to look what are the possibility of making a loss, for instance, or how big is the possible loss? Or in the best case, how big is the best case outcome and the probability attached to it? So we'll see in a, in a, in a subsequent example how we can apply that. But remember, you can't just look at the expected value on its own. You have to consider the possibilities of the different outcomes happening, probabilities, um, and also the magnitude of the outcome.
So a very, very large loss that is only 2% likely can sink the company. So the risk is too big to undertake that project, even though the expected value is positive and maybe high positive. Then the attitude of the decision makers towards risk also needs to uh, be taken into account. A risk avers decision maker would not like to make losses or they'd rather to uh, limit their losses. So you'd have to advise on the possibility of making a loss and the size of the losses that could be made. And then a risk taking decision maker would want to maximize the best possible outcome. So they are optimistic. They might be willing to take more risk to go for that higher, uh, higher outcome. So like I said a little bit earlier, the expected value is not the actual outcome. Only if it's a project that's repeated over and over again, like for instance a company that drills for oil under the seabed, if they drill a hundred or a thousand times a year in different spots, then the expected value will approximate the average of all the actual outcomes. If it's a once-off, so they're only going to, say, build an oil rig in one spot, then the expected value is less useful. Because it'll only happen once, so only one of the different outcomes will happen. The expected value is rather meaningless in that case. So what about launching a new product? Is that once-off or repetitive? Well, if it's something new that you design, say a patent for a new uh, medicine or a drug, then and if, if there's nothing in the market like it and it's the first of its kind and the first that this company does, then it's clearly one spot. Well, if it's an established drug company that launches uh, hundreds of drugs every year, then it's a repetitive product. So then the expected value might be you. Or say it's a candy manufacturer and it's a new type of candy that they launch and they do this every few months, then they might use past information and the probabilities attached to the different outcomes of new products that's launched and other market research in order to calculate an expected value. And then it might be more used. In the next clip, we'll look at the technical aspects or how to calculate the expected value. So for now, to recap, expected value is just one tool that we use to help us make better decisions. It's not always going to be the right decision, just more uh, informed decision. And then remember, the expected value is nothing other than just the weighted average of the different outcomes, and the weights are the probabilities that's attached to each outcome. So it's just a mathematical weighted average. Then, after you've calculated the expected value and advised on whether to accept or reject this specific project, then you have to consider other things like um, the risk of making a loss, the worst case scenario, the probability of the worst case happening, the size of the possible loss that can be made, and then the best case scenario and the probability attached to it. So remember, you can't just look at expected value on its own. So that's all for this session.